This short screencast will explain to you what a binary search is. The basics. A binary search basically is a more efficient way of finding things in a larger list. The thing is though, that list has to be sorted first, and you'll see why in a second. So what exactly happens in a binary search? Well, the first thing that we do is we f um, ask the user for what is it that exactly that they want to find. Then we take that, and because the list is sorted, we compare that against the first part of the list. And how do we do this? We basically manipulate the index so that we look at one part of the list at a time. If what we're looking for is in the top half of the list, then we keep dividing index until we find the item. If we don't find it in the first part of the list, then we look at the bottom half of the list. And then we keep dividing that until we find the item. So I know when you're looking at the text about this, this seems a little hard to understand. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut to a, um, a Raptor file, which mimics what you have in your book. And I think you'll see what exactly it is doing when you take a look at how it's implemented. Here we are in Raptor um, uh, with a demo of what a binary search actually looks like. And once again, this is the example from in your book, and I thought this was a pretty good one. I made some refinements to it so it would make a little bit more sense. Now in Raptor, when we're trying to load an array, we have to do it in this way. So basically what that first symbol is doing is it's creating the array called words, and it's putting as the first item in words, aardvark. Um, and then we go down the line and we fill it. So by the time we get to here, words 11, zebra, we have filled our array. Now I ran this program already just to kind of illustrate that once we get to this symbol, this is what this is going to look like. And you can notice that all the items here in the list are sorted. That's a trick with binary searches. They have to be sorted. All right, so let's go on and continue with the rest of the variables. Number num items is 11. That's the number of items in our array. Key is what we're looking for. One word, now this is an, a refinement that I put on the program. Anytime I'm teaching arrays, arrays can be a little daunting. So in order to reverse that or make it less daunting, I always create a variable called one word. And I dump whatever item in the array I want to look at into here. Now we have a variable that looks very familiar to you. One word rather than multiple. Um, low is the low end of our index, high is the high end. Um, now I'm setting index at 1 because what I'm going to do is the first part of the program I'm just going to print out the list so that we have it. Found signifies it's a flag saying yep we found the item. Alright so the first part of the program basically goes ahead and prints out all the items in the list and you can see here that I'm emptying out one item out of the words array, placing it in one word and then I'm just printing it incrementing my index. Once the index gets 12, that means my list has been printed. Okay, now I'm going to ask the user for the name or for a word that they are looking for. I'm further going to reassign index so that what will happen is I will look at only a part of the list as opposed to the whole thing. Now rather than going and explaining the pseudocode, which is going to seem very foreign to you, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this. And what I want to do is get my output window to show up here. Okay, so I have the speed set very high until we get to the point where I'm asking the user for a key. And at that point, I'm going to slow it down because this is old news. We know what to do with this. Okay, so there it's asking us now for a word. So you can see that this is the printout of our, um, of our list. And I'm going to go with the example in the book, which says we want to look for the word called house. Now we can look over here and see that it is the fourth item in our array um, with an index of four. So if we wanted to just isolate house, we would just say words four, and that would give us house. But we're looking for this. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this over because we don't need the output anymore and kind of go down to the code and then I'm going to talk to how the code is executed. So I just put in a breakpoint and what I'm going to do is, is go step by step. Now what this statement means is until found is equal 1 or low is greater than or equal to high, then we'll exit out of the list. So the first one um, tells us, okay, um, this is, uh, the item's been found. Uh, the next one basically means that we've exhausted that portion of the list um, and that'll basically kick us out of the loop. So basically the loop doesn't keep running if the item is not in the list at all. So the second part takes care of what if we typed in a word that isn't even in the list. So moving on with what's next, I'm just going to take one word out of our um, our, uh, our array and place it into my variable one word. Now what word is going to go in there is the fifth item in the list. So if I pull up my output, or rather let me just expand this, the fifth item in the list is job. Now how did we get that point? How did we get to that point? Well, remember I'm resetting the index here. So I'm taking number of items, which is 11 divided by 2. Now because indexes have to be integers, I'm using floor to basically get to the next nearest whole number. So 11 divided by 2 basically would round to 5. So that's where we're getting 5. So here we go. And we can see that it assigns it to job. Now it takes a look and it says, OK, key meaning house is that less than job, meaning is it in this upper part of the list right in here? All right, it is. So we should be going on this side of the decision structure, and we do. So since house is not equal to job, we have to keep looking. So now we're going to keep dividing up that list in half. We know it's in the top part of the list, not the bottom, so we're not going to bother going and looking at the bottom anymore. We're just going to keep looking up at the top. So now what we're doing is high is equal to index minus 1. So high now goes into um, 4. Remember, high was set at 11. So it takes 5 minus 1 and equals to 4. Now we're going to reset the index. So we're going to take high, which is 4, Add now 1, um, which is 5, and then divide it by 2. Now remember we're using floor so we can get an integer, and so now our index turns into 2. Okay, so we still haven't found our word yet, and we haven't exhausted the list yet, so we're going to keep on going. So now we're going to pull out book. Okay, so is book less than how are or so is house less than book meaning is it in the top part of the list well the only top part here is aardvark so we know that that's not the case so we're going to go now to the other side of the decision structure okay where we're going to compare house to book is house greater than book and it is now the only way we're going to end up on this side is if it's equal meaning house is equal to house so now we're going to manipulate low and take and add one to it. So remember low before was one. Okay, now we're going to add to it. Um, and uh, remember high was set at four and low is uh, set at one. So now we have our index is now set to three. Okay, so we're going to keep on going. We haven't found our, our word yet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to compare uh, whatever is at 3. Now whatever is at 3 is dog. So dog is not equal to house. But the question is where is it in the list? Well, it's house is not above dog. House is below. So we're actually going to have one more trip down this, this area. And once again, we're going to manipulate index. So index, um, or low, excuse me, was 3. Now it will be 4 and we'll take 4 plus 4, which is 8, divided by 2, which will be 4. So our new index value is going to be 4. We haven't found anything yet, so now let's take a look at what's at the fourth uh, part of the list. And what we will find is that um, the word that is in our fourth item in the list, which is house, is equal to our search word. Found will be equal to 1. And like I said, the way we get out of this loop 
is found is equal to 1 and low is greater than or equal to high. High and low are now equal to, so that allows us to get out of the list. And we have found our word. So that basically is what a binary search does. If you didn't get all of what happens here, what I would suggest is to download this file and just keep running through it so that you can see what it's doing. You can clearly see that it is a more efficient way of looking for things. Once again, list has to be sorted. If you have any questions about this screencast, please log your questions to the appropriate discussion forum.